Hello! Today I wanted to share with you how I made the simulations that work together to create this scene. And first up I'll be talking about the ripple and water simulation that's going on here, and then after that I'll share the equally important but slightly less noticed mud simulation that's going on underneath the water. And so I'll break those two simulations down for you and share how you can do these types of simulations in Blender. So to start out with the ripple slash water simulation here, it's important to have a plane that has lots of resolution. So you can see here in edit mode, there's lots of divisions here, and this resolution kind of helps make up the ripples. And the finer the resolution is, the more details you can get in your simulation. So the way I created this effect in the simulation panel, you can see I've enabled a dynamic paint simulation. So the dynamic paint system uses a canvas and brush, and so this water surface here is going to be our canvas, and then the brush is going to be our creature moving here. And as the creature moves, it kind of brushes the canvas and creates these ripples, which you can get if you go down to the surface and set it to be waves. You can also do paint and have like a texture created or displace, and it'll do kind of what the, the ground beneath here is doing. As you can see, as he digs into the mud, it kind of displaces the the muddy plane underneath and then you can also set it to wait and I've set the top one here to waves. Now I've messed with the time a little bit but that's not too important. One thing that I have found is pretty important is to set a brush collection. So I've set this collection proxy which is the low resolution model of this character. I also have a high resolution model that is actually the one that renders but for now I'm just using proxy and if we select one of these objects, you can see it also has a dynamic paint simulation. I'm using this as the brush, and you just add brush, and you can see I've added a few of these other limbs and objects as dynamic paint brushes as well. And that way they all affect the ripples of the plane. Now the canvas object is kind of where you bake everything, so once I messed around with it enough to get something I liked, I just went down to cache and hit bake. You can see there's a frame start and end up here at the top, so that's a pretty important thing to do, is making sure that you don't simulate more than you need or less than you need. And so that's pretty much the entirety of how I did the ripples. And you can see here there's also some leaves on top of the water, which are kind of bobbing about with the ripples, and that's actually a geometry nodes project that I was just learning a bit more about it with. I probably won't go into that here, but if you're interested in learning about it, let me know. But let's move on for now to underneath where I have this crazy mud simulation going on. It's actually just a smoke simulation, but it acts a lot similarly to when you're kicking up mud underneath water. And so the way I did this is we've still got the creature's limbs as the dynamic paint brushes here, and I've selected the lower kind of plane underneath that represents the bottom of the swamp. And I've also given this a dynamic paint object. Let's see, in our simulations tab, you can see there's the canvas here on top. Instead of having this set to waves, I set it to weight. And if we look at it in the weight paint tab here, you can see wherever the creature is intersecting is creating a red element in our vertex group. And so basically, if we go down beneath that, you can see I've got a bit of a fluid simulation going on as well, which is actually kind of a smoke simulation. So I've set that to smoke, and this plane here is an inflow object, and I've set it so that only the parts that are red in the vertex group that the creature is contacting are the parts that emit the smoke. Now of course you can't only have an inflow object for a smoke simulation, so I've also got a domain here, which you can see here, and this is fairly default smoke simulation settings. I just set the resolution to be about 64, and I think I might have messed a little bit with the temperature difference and stuff, so it rises a little bit more slowly than actual smoke. Other than that, I've also got a pretty simple material here, which is really important. You could probably get away with just setting a principled volume shader to a bit of a brownish color and maybe turning up the density. I wanted a little bit more density control, so I used some x, y, and z coordinates to just kind of fade it off at the top and at the end so it could blend into my actual plate footage. And then I just multiplied that a bunch and you can see it's only in this little area. For some reason that I don't really understand beyond the domain, it seems to think it wanted to be a domain still. It actually gave me some artifacts in the final render that I wasn't super happy with, but I figured it was probably good enough at that point. I hope you found this useful. And speaking of useful things that aren't actually that related, something that's really been helping me out as a visual effects artist recently is this pack of smoke elements. They're really good for adding a lot of life to your scenes, and if you want them, you can get them for free. There's a link in the description. So I hope all this was helpful, and I hope you have an excellent day. Cheers!